Hi, my name is Roger. Today I want to tell you about the seven most common mistakes I see when receiving files for mixing. When I receive files for mixing, I often get access to them on a cloud service like Dropbox or Google Drive or something like that. Sometimes I get the tracks sent to me via send big files or spread or some other web service that could send big files. That doesn't matter. Just have connection with your mix engineer and send the files as he or she wants to receive them. I will go through some mandatory things that you have to think about when sending your tracks to a mix engineer and then I will tell you about the seven most common mistakes I see when receiving files. Mandatory things are things like every track should start on the same beat of the song. Because if you change door and some tracks start at another point in the song, it's impossible to puzzle them together. Every track should be recorded or at least bounced with the same sample rate and bit depth. I also like to receive the tracks with no processing. If you want some kind of special production processing, then send that track two times, one dry and one with the processing. So I, as a mix engineer, know what you're after. Now the seven most common mistakes I see. Some of these you already know. Some of these you think are ridiculous, but maybe you get some kind of idea how you should send the files to a mix engineer if you're gonna do that. The first mistake I often see is not naming your tracks. Name your tracks. It takes such a long time to figure out what everything is if the tracks are not named. And often the shorter the name, the better. And start every track with the instrument name. Like EGTR, clean EGTR, dirty or something. Then I know as a mix engineer where to put it in my door because it's electric guitar every time. Sometimes it's useful to do numbers before the instrument name like 01 kick in, 02 kick out, 03 snare top, etc. I don't necessarily need that. That's up to you if you want to do it. Maybe it's easier for some mix engineers. How would you like to receive it? The second mistake I see is making the names too complicated. Yeah, I told you, you should name your tracks, but a Sennheiser MD421 over the right shoulder of the drummer pointed slightly to the left with the sun in his back. It's a too complicated name. And it's very hard to see what that track is when you're trying to work fast. And we all like to work fast when we're mixing because we want to spend as much time listening as possible. Mistake number three is not sending a rough mix. The rough mix doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to sound good at all. But it gives me as a mix engineer a starting point, how much reverb to use, where things should be panned, etc. And what kind of feeling and arrangement you were listening to when recording the song. Mistake number four is sending a rough mix, but with a different sample rate and or bit depth than the tracks in the song. And also a rough mix that doesn't start at the same beat as the rest of the tracks. Please send a rough mix that starts at the same beat as the rest of the tracks and has the same sample rate and bit depth. Then I could put the rough mix into my session and listen to it whenever I want and listen to the third chorus and compare it to the mix I've done. Mistake number five is not editing or at least cleaning your tracks before sending them. If there are breaths or clicks and pops from an electric guitar between takes, take them out, erase them before bouncing the track. Mistake number six is bouncing your tracks with processing on your master bus. I received a mix a couple of years ago and every track had a limiter on it. So I called my client and he told me that he didn't have a limiter on the tracks, 
but it turned out he had a limiter on his monster bus and was bouncing the tracks through that monster bus. It was impossible to mix, so he had to resend all the tracks to me. Before I tell you the seventh most common mistake I see, I want to tell you some good things to know when sending tracks to a mix engineer. First of all, communication. Communicate with your mix engineer, and especially if the mix engineer wants to communicate with you. If the mix engineer wants some kind of answer from you, answer as quickly as possible. And if you don't know the answer, tell them that you don't know the answer. Just communicate. That is also the way the mix engineer gets to know you and what you are after for this song. Both parties have to agree on a deadline. Let's say I get three songs to mix from a client and we set a deadline in two weeks. In two weeks I have to send a mix to the client for a first revision. And then we set another deadline two weeks after that for the final revision. And when it comes to revisions, you have to ask your mix engineer how he or she likes to do that. I like to have three. I like to offer three revisions for my clients. And there's reasons for that. Of course, the clients have to say their opinions of their mix. It's their song. But I like them to say as many opinions they have at the same time so I have something to work with. Therefore, three revisions. And if I, if I can't make it work in three revisions, I'm not the right guy for the job. They should hire someone else. Instead of having long names on your tracks, send some mixing notes for every song that you send. You can do it on an email or a Word document or a PDF or anything. Just make some notes for every song. Tell the mix engineer how you want the song to feel and also some technical aspects of the song. This is a good example of how I would like to receive some notes. Notes for that song. E flat minor, 123 BPM, 48 kHz, 24 bit. The song is based around the beat, the bass line and the lyrics, and there's where we want the focus. There are both recorded acoustic as well as electronic drums. We would like the electronic drums to be the foundation for the rhythm. The acoustic drums are there to spice the beat up and make it feel alive. It would be great if the last two choruses really lifted, where the horn section comes in. The song is going to be used in a commercial, so we would like to have stems for drums, instruments, BGVs and lead. No mastering is needed. With these notes, I know that the electronic drums, the bass and the vocal is the main part of the song. I also know that I need to save some energy for the last two choruses to make them pop. And I also like to receive the key, the tempo and what sample rate and bit that they have recorded it in. The, the seventh most common mistake is expecting miracles. Mix engineers, especially good mix engineers, works with feelings. They want the song to feel great. Sound great is secondary, feel great is first. And if the song is recorded badly or the arrangement sucks, the mix engineer can't really do much to save that. Don't expect them to save those things. Those things you have to fix before mix. Do you agree with this list? Or is there something I missed that should have been on this list? Tell me in the comments. Mistakes. We all do them. And experienced people have made more mistakes than most people have even tried. And mistakes in Swedish is mistag. Mistag. Until next time, Roger that. Mm -hmm.